Taking a live look outside with drive cam, Alex Gomez making his way southbound on 35 after showing us an incident on the northeast side near the form. It was down to one lane. We're going to get an update on that in just a bit. And looking out there with a live cam, looks pretty right now at 79 degrees. Things are going to heat up today and throughout the Father's Day weekend, but there is a glimmer of hope next week. We're going to be checking in with Mike all about that. Live from ASAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's 6 a.m. June 14th. It is also Flag Day. Yes, it is. And Father's Day weekend. So you still have, uh, you know, a couple of days to get your gift if you've been procrastinating. Yep. Uh, make sure you make your phone call. Yes, phone calls on Sunday or all weekend. Or why don't we do the like Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Just really say that you're thinking about dad this weekend, but it's going to be a hot one all the way. Yeah, Mike, your uh, mother nature is really not being kind to the fathers. 100 degrees no. possibly. Yeah, yeah. We're, you know, 97 yesterday at a degree each and every day. And, you know, we're looking at uh, 100. But it is encouraging still for next week. Great. Talking about the consistency in the long range forecast, which you always like to see, because even starting off this week, we were looking at next week as having some rain chances. That's still the situation. Uh, just a few clouds hanging around here. Some uh, some blue skies as well. So should be a pretty nice looking sunrise this morning. Still temperatures normal low 73. So we're six above that right now. That's pretty much the call all around the area. Five, six degrees above normal. And of course, we've got a ton of humidity out there. And when you start seeing these dew points, 74, 75, that's you know, kind of wet towel, fog up your glasses sort of humidity. So heat index right now feels like 80 and uh, pretty much upper 70s and 80s for heat index readings all around the area. As far as the uh, mold, it is on the moderate side, did come down from the previous day and throughout the rest of today, we're going to have lots of sunshine out there. A few clouds this morning, sunshine in the afternoon. That's going to be the situation tomorrow as well as going on into Father's Day. 90 at noon and yep, 98 high temperature, but it's going to feel like it's the low hundreds. We'll talk about those changes coming in here next week. The Gulf is going to be open for business and there is a little disturbance out there. So rain chances are looking pretty good and temperatures are looking really good as well. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, got some problems out there, right? Yes, we do, Mike. Uh, northeast side of town. So we've gone from the north side of town where we had a crash that cleared out about uh, 30 minutes ago to this ongoing construction issue there. 35 southbound at Olympia Parkway in the forum area. So what we're looking at here is basically uh, stop and go traffic. I mean, traffic is slowly moving through this area. Multiple main lanes blocked of I-35 South if you're coming through the forum or Live Oak area right now. So anyone out there in the Selma area, Shirts area, Shirts, uh, Cibolo area, also just keep this in mind if you're coming 35 South to 1604. Let's go live now to our drive cam, our man on the roads, photojournalist Alex Gomez to give us an update on where he is at. Alex, how are things looking out there? Well, good morning, RJ. Right now, things are looking okay for the downtown area. I'm at 35 southbound near McCullough. I just made my way here from the northeast side, and you're right, only one lane open, but when I was passing by, they were picking up barrels. So it looks like construction should be wrapping up now. They're probably discussing where to get those breakfast tacos this morning. So job well done to them. Hopefully the delay, the delay times are gonna get better from here on out, RJ. Yes, you definitely cannot go wrong uh, with breakfast tacos on a Friday morning as we get set for the weekend. All right, Alex, we'll check in back with you here in just a little bit. I uh, want to show you guys real quick back out on our maps, our drive times. And again, everything else the rest, uh, across the city looking pretty good right now. If you're coming in from the Lytle area, Pleasanton, uh, Floresville area, about half an hour there. But again, New Braunfels being the biggest spot that we're seeing at the moment over an hour. If you're coming from New Braunfels to the greater San Antonio area. So keep that in mind if you're about to head out. Stephanie, Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Well, folks in Harlandale McComb area tell case that they're fed up with a pack of dogs they say are roaming through their neighborhood. It's been going on for weeks and they want something done about it. So neighbors say the pack numbering between 10 to 15 dogs roams late at night and in the early morning hours. They blame the pack for killing multiple neighborhood cats and they're worried that if something isn't done soon, people could get hurt. What if I decide to take a walk? What then? And they show up. What am I supposed to run? I can't run. When I saw how big that pack was, I started thinking about, you know, they're right here by this elementary school. There's kids around playing outside. 
Animal Care Services has released a statement saying, in part, people should call 311 to give as much information possible about the pack. You could read their full statement on KSAT.com. Well, looking ahead, the murder trial for the man you see here is set to start next month. Giovanni Pascal is charged with murder for shooting his girlfriend in a gas station parking lot last August. Now, arrest paperwork says the victim, Deanna Mason, was shot in the head and chest. Pascal's trial will begin on July 12th. Also looking ahead, San Antonio police say they're hoping to add 50 new officers thanks to a new federal grant. City Council approved SAPD's plan to apply for a Department of Justice grant worth $6.25 million. It would help the department move closer to its goal of adding 360 patrol officers within a five-year period. Well, the cost of owning a short-term rental like an Airbnb in San Antonio is going up. City Council approved plans to raise three-year permit fees from $100 to $450. The council will also require platforms like Airbnb to remove listings without proper permits. It will also fall on the platforms to collect the city's hotel occupancy taxes as opposed to the host. And over 3,100 short-term rentals are registered across the city. Saws is hoping new d drought restrictions could help switch the water supply. Saws officials presented several proposals to City Council yesterday. One of the biggest changes would be a new surcharge for the heaviest water users. That would take the place of the current stage three restrictions, which Saws has never needed to use. Right now, that twice a month watering is pretty severe. It's a pretty onerous thing to have to do. The plants can survive it, but it's just difficult for people. So we've been reluctant to go there unless it's an emergency. So we want something we do before that. <laughs> right now, that's it. That's all we have unless we make a change. City Council is expected to vote on the changes next week. In your morning headlines, a manhunt in Houston is over after an inmate escaped from Harris County Jail Thursday afternoon. The escapee, later identified as Nigel Thomas Sanders, got away while returning from a court hearing on burglary and weapons charges. Police tell us that Sanders attempted to carjack a district attorney's office employee in the parking lot, but failed and jumped into the Buffalo Bayou instead. He was found and taken back into custody around 3 this morning. In New Jersey, a family saw a large chunk of ice fall from the sky, crashing into their home, and they got it on camera. If I could tell the story to anybody else, they won't believe me. <laughs> they will not believe me what happened to, this, to my house. That's a homeowner who says he's thankful that, that him and his wife were in their backyard when the chunk of ice landed on their roof. As for where that ice came from, the couple says it likely came off a plane flying over their house. So the couple filed a complaint to the FAA saying they'll likely have to redo their whole roof. Wow. It's scary. Yeah. Oh my goodness. 608 and 78 degrees. Well, still to come before 630, the Dallas Mavericks have one more chance to keep their season alive in the NBA Finals. But they're up against tonight in Game 4. And after the break, we're shining a KSAT Kids spotlight on a school in San Antonio that's teaching the art and history of ballet. And taking a look out there with a live cam, looking beautiful, rise and shine. It's Friday morning, 78 degrees, not too bad. We'll be right back. A local ballet school is encouraging kids to not only learn the art and physical abilities of ballet, but it's also a way to learn about history. Case at 12 producer Haley Powers takes us inside the School of Ballet San Antonio and how it's being taught here. Ballet is an art form of dance that dates back to the 15th and 16th centuries. It began in the Italian Renaissance courts as a way to entertain aristocrats. It made its way to France and now all the terminology in the sport is derived from the French language. We get a little language you know, as well as going on into what it means for your body, because you're trying to train the muscle tone to a certain way. You have terms like plie, which means to bend the legs, and dégagé, to disengage your foot from one place to another, and also rond de jambe, the circling of the leg. All the terms are taught at the School of Ballet San Antonio, the only ballet school in our city to teach the French syllabus. 
the French syllabus is the mother language of ballet. It's the original codification of ballet that they still teach in Paris, and it's been passed down from person to person. That syllabus has been taught here in San Antonio for just three years, but the School of Ballet has been open nationwide for over 30. I find that if you have a school attached to a company, then those kids get exposed to the arts and the full journey of what it looks like. Exposing kids to the art of ballet is only part of the process. They also learn the history and how to be athletes. The ballet dancers of the professional level are athletes the same way you watch the Olympics. And I think because it's an art form and you don't have a scoring part, people maybe don't actually associate it with that. But Bailey Powers, KSAT 12 News. Well, the School of Ballet San Antonio is inviting kids to learn about ballet this summer. They have four summer camps happening between June and July. Those are the Fairy Tale Fun, Peter Pan, Epic Villains, and the Nutcracker. Kids ages 4 to 10 can participate, and camps are $295 for the week. You can learn more about the camps on the website ksat.com. Well, time now is 6.15, and it looks like a big mess on I-35. Let's check back with R.J. Marcus. Yeah, guys, uh, yeah, that's tough getting on your toes there. That's a hard thing to do. Oh, Mike was <laughs> doing ballet behind the scenes wow, earlier. He's a man of uh, many bad. talents over there. Many talents. <laughs> many talents. <laughs> there are 35 southbound Olympia Parkway. Yeah, we're still seeing a major backup here for our drivers on the northeast side of town. Uh, basically, traffic backed up all the way Evans Road. Shirts Parkway now, so FM 15, 18. If you're coming through those areas, keep that in mind. Lookout Road might be a potential option if you're trying to get around uh, some of this mess there on 35. We do have uh, one incident closer to the downtown area, so we're going to go to our maps here. This is going to be 35 northbound at uh, Cesar Chavez as we switch over here again. Downtown area, and it looks like we had a TxDOT uh, truck, and it's uh, actually leaving the scene, so we will continue to gather more information on what's going on here. But again, 35 northbound Cesar Chavez. Let's go ahead and check back in with Alex Gomez because he actually was in the downtown area. So, Alex, uh, give us an update on where you are at. Well, good morning, RJ. I just left downtown. I'm, out, I'm more on the west side now. This is going to be 90 westbound just past 410. So far, things are looking good on this side of town. We got dry roads this morning, a lot more daylight, so driving conditions are pretty good right now. Most of the highways look to be good aside from that construction on the northeast side. So happy Friday, RJ. Yes, definitely a happy Friday indeed as we get set uh, for Father's Day weekend. All right, so we'll check back in with Alex here in just a little bit, but I uh, did want to take this opportunity to say, Mike, happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you very happy much. Happy Father's, Father's Day, Day, Mike. I really appreciate that. Yes. All, the, all the dads out there, the, the dads yeah. that I work with and everything too. Yes. And to, and to, <laughs> Luis, oh, your, thank, thank your hubby, you. our co-worker too. So. Aw, thank yeah. you. It's going to be a fantastic weekend, despite the temperatures. Mm, but we do have a little bit of hope down the road. First of all, take a look at this picture. And uh, moon's not going to be full for just over a week, but what a great shot there. The quote I'm kind of interested in, this says George Carlin. I assume that's George Carlin, the, the comedian there. And I've got to read over here, and the, there are nights when the wolves are silent and only the moon howls. Interesting. Never yeah. heard that one before. So. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. Oscar, I know it doesn't sound like George Carlin, but anyway, thank you for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, a few clouds hanging out there. Uh, some holes, obviously, as uh, as Alex was saying. There's uh, you know a lot more daylight out there right now. All right, let's jump ahead, going into next week and seeing that we've got temperatures still wanting to lean slightly on the above normal side. However, look at the uh, odds of seeing some rain around here. So this doesn't mean the, the rain forecast, but looking at compared to what would be normal, this is definitely leaning toward the above normal side going in the 20th through the 24th and then going in toward the end of the month. And notice how temperatures would be closer to normal readings. Normal high being right now 93 degrees. We're going to gain a degree or two as we go in toward the end of the month, but being closer to normal readings and still with a leaning toward the above normal side as far as precipitation is concerned. So that's encouraging looking at the long range forecast. So here's what the upper level winds are looking like. And we've got the high, which again, this thing was uh, centered down there 
to the southwest of us uh, over the past couple of days. And that's why around the clockwise rotation we had those little disturbances came on in here, gave us some of the rain. There could be still something along the coastal plain today just because the surface winds are coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. But as we go on in time and go into now, of course, it's going to be hot this weekend, but going to the first part of the week, late Sunday and first part of the week, the high is going to set up shop over here uh, along the eastern seaboard. So clockwise rotation that opens up the Gulf. We get these easterly waves coming on in here as well as a low trying to develop well down there to the south. And so that's just opening up all that moisture to come on in little disturbances. We don't have the high that dome on top of us to prevent anything from developing. So by maybe late Monday could see a shower or two, especially going in toward Tuesday and the middle portion of the week when that low wants to try and develop. Now it's going to be down there in the uh, central Mexico. Mexico area, but there are still some long range indications that we've got a decent rain chance coming on in here by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And maybe if we're lucky, even something way down the road, but that's still a little far off. As of right now, though, next three days going to be really hot today, tomorrow, as well as Father's Day 100. And then as clouds, the Gulf opens up, we get some more moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, a few more clouds hanging around here. That's going to help hold temperatures down. And no, that's not a typo. We're looking at 89 for highs Thursday and or excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday and some better rain chances going into the middle part of next week. Keep your fingers crossed. Yes. All right. More after this. The darkness of bipolar depression made me feel like I was losing interest in the things I love. Then I found a chance to let in the light. Discover Capilita. Unlike some medicines that only treat bipolar 1, Capilita is proven to deliver significant symptom relief from both bipolar 1 and 2 depression. And in clinical trials, movement disorders and weight gain were not common. Capilita can cause serious side effects. Call your doctor about sudden mood changes, behaviors, or suicidal thoughts right away. Antidepressants may increase these risks in young adults. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Capilita is not approved for dementia-related psychosis. Report fever, confusion, or stiff muscles, which may be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. Common side effects include sleepiness, dizziness, nausea, and dry mouth. These aren't all the side effects. In the darkness of bipolar 1 and 2 depression, Capilita can help you let in the light. Ask your doctor about Capilita. Find savings and support at Capilita.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, a desperate search for a missing California hiker in Greece. But I feel helpless and I feel really far away from my best friend. Authorities say retired L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy Albert Calabe, a seasoned hiker, was last seen on a trail on the Greek island of Amorgos. Greek police are studying this surveillance video obtained by Mega Live News that appears to show Calabe before his hike. The 58-year-old set out on a four-hour trek Tuesday morning. He started his hike what would have been 9 p.m. Monday night our time, 7 a.m. Greek time. And it's been a really long time. We're dealing with a clock now. Calabay was supposed to meet a friend for lunch after his hike. He was last spotted at 11 a.m. at a refreshment stand along the trail, but he never reached the other side. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this urgent search. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Tonight is game four of the NBA Finals at 7.30 right here on KSAT 12. The Boston Celtics have a chance to clinch an all-time record 18th championship tonight against the Dallas Mavs. They lead three games to zero. No team has ever come back from being down zero and three in the playoffs. So Dallas, they have a lot of work to do. Here at home, the countdown is on to Sunday's UFL championship game. So it's a two-time USFL champion Birmingham Stallions against our San Antonio Brahmas. And San Antonio has shown they are hungry to win a title, not only for head coach Wade Phillips, but also for the Alamo City. Well, defensive lineman Savion Patton knows firsthand what a win would mean for all of us. The city of San Antonio, they've been wanting the football team there for a long time. And I can remember when I was a kid, whenever, uh, I think it was the Saints, when uh, Hurricane Katrina came through and they practiced at the Alamo Dome. Uh, they did camp and everything there, I think. Um, and they had fans coming out like that was their team. You know, I even think they petitioned to have a team down there, if I'm mistaken. Um, but and I think the Cowboys did at some point in time, too. So I think that 
the San Antonio people and the people of South Texas have been wanting a team in that area. And I think they deserve one. Now we're bringing them one and we're going to bring a championship home to them too this weekend. So just a reminder, this is a four o'clock kickoff on Sunday. And today on GMSA 9, the Brahmas will be here with the XFL Championship Trophy for a live Q&A. So don't miss that today again on GMSA at 9. And RJ just said he's from Quero. Yes. Yes. And Quero, Texas yep. State. Quero native and Texas State alum. Yes, sir. Very Bobcat. <laughs> Horns forward. <laughs> the Brahmas. Yeah. All right, guys. It's 626 and 79 degrees. Let's look out there with drive cam. Alex Gomez has been busy this morning all over San Antonio. He was on the north side earlier and right now still giving us a shot here. We're going to be uh, checking in with him very soon. Good morning. We're almost at 630 looking out there at drive cam with our Alex Gomez. He has pulled over to give us a shot at this growing traffic we're having right now. It's 78 degrees south side. Oh, gosh, we're going to have a hot weekend for Father's Day. But Mike says we have some good news about midweek. Things get much cooler. And we're talking 80s. That's a big deal in the summer. He's going to yes, explain in just a bit. Hi, happy Friday. It is June 14th. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Excited that it's Friday? Yes, uh, we are all, everybody's in a good mood. It started off this morning with our producer, Hardy. He put happy Friday, put a little smiley face in the nose there. <laughs> a little emoji. <laughs> For all of us, yes. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about, what puts you in a good mood too, is the forecast for next week. So yes. today, tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to be anywhere from, you know, five, six, seven degrees above normal, potentially five, maybe six, seven degrees below normal by uh, the middle part of the week as things are shaping up as of right now. We've got a couple of clouds hanging out there right now. And as you mentioned, temperatures, you know, we're again, 79, normal low 73. So six above normal, pretty much average around the area. And then of course, we still have plenty of humidity, our morning humidity, and it will drop somewhat this afternoon, but not as much as we'd like to see. So we are gonna have a heat index to deal with later on today. So you can pretty much add 20 or so to a lot of these numbers and it's going to feel like in many places that we are up into the just in the low hundreds molds on the moderate side. It did come down from the previous day's reading and should be uh, getting on the low side later on today. Now, as far as weekend, plenty of sunshine and we are going to be on the hot side going up to 100 by Sunday. Now, next week, 90s, when we were talking about those 80s. Yeah, that's not a, a typo right there and decent rain chances. Then even the week after that, and I know it's a little bit, uh, well, kind of early to be looking, you know, two weeks down the road, but with the way things are shaping up, maybe there's going to be something tropical trying to develop even way down the road. So this is just sort of giving a, a overall view of the pattern change that we're starting to see, which opens up the Gulf. So things get brewing out there. There's a lot of, you know, very warm water, kind of bath water out there. So we'll just definitely keep an eye. But yeah, next week is looking promising. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, we had a big problem on the northeast side. Still yes, there? Yes, Mike. Yeah. And uh, this is not a still shot that you're looking at here. We are seeing traffic now slowly move through this area right now. This is 35 southbound at Olympia Parkway. You see that all the work being done here, the northeast uh, central expansion project there, they're going to Add these elevated highways here, basically a double decker highway. But unfortunately, we got to deal with the mess that we're seeing right now. So 35 southbound Olympia Parkway, seeing some major backups in that area. Going to show you your maps here real quick before we get over to Alex Gomez and see some of the backup that we're now seeing. Basically, Topper Wine Road all the way past the Forum, Live Oak area up to Selma area. If you are headed up in this direction, Shirts Parkway, maybe think about taking Lookout Road to kind of get around this mess or even maybe FM 78. It's a little bit out of the way, but still something to keep in mind if you're on the northeast side of town. All right, let's check in with Alex Gomez, our photojournalist. He is on the roads right now, so give us an update of uh, where you are at, Alex. Well, good morning, RJ. Even over here on the far west side, still getting a little bit more heavy with, when it comes to traffic volume. This is going to be 90 eastbound, just inside 1604. But driving conditions are great. Dry roads, check out the sky. It's going to be a gorgeous uh, sunrise this morning. And don't forget this Sunday, RJ, it's going to be UFL Whoa. championship game. We've got the San Man. Antonio Brahmas. Yes. Shout out to my friend Rocky for hooking me up with this shirt. It's going to be a good game this Sunday. It's going to be, uh, we're celebrating the fathers, yes, the Brahmas, yeah. uh -huh. uh, but not the lions. Tell Mike not the lions. <laughs>
<laughs> Not the Lions, yeah. I, you know what? Mike's probably going to get you a shirt now, a Detroit Lions shirt. But uh, yeah, shout out to Alex there, representing for the San Antonio Brahmas, checking out the roads for us. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Appreciate it, man, as we come out uh, back out here to show maps real quick. And again, biggest back up that we're seeing right now, northeast side. But yes, vamos, Brahmas, Ramos, as they get set for the UFL championship game. All right, Stephanie, Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Well, we are in week two of President Biden's executive order limiting immigration at the southern border. So KSET went down to Eagle Pass, which is seeing a renewed military presence from the Texas National Guard. The National Guard took over the city's Shelby Park. It says they have since reopened it to the public. Now, some in Eagle Pass say there should be a better solution to help people seeking asylum while others disagree. They say our park is accessible, it is not. We're not allowed to even be on the river on kayak. We have no accessibility. People don't realize or are aware that millions a month are being dedicated to the militarization of the wall and the border. When it could be invested in the community or maybe creating possible programs or solutions to those people crossing instead of limiting those numbers. But just because he put it because it's election time? I mean, it's kind of too late for that. What do you think should be done instead? Deport everybody. Deport all the illegals that come in. Why is that? Because, I mean, my wife is a Mexican citizen. We did it the right way. Everybody should do it the right way. And we have more of what people are saying about the border policies and the National Guard's placement at Shelby Park on our website at kset.com. And the San Antonio Police Department says one of its officers, this man, was arrested for a DWI. So Damien Segovia was arrested by UTS, U, UTSA police just after 3 a.m. yesterday morning. Segovia was off duty at the time. He's now on administrative leave. We've also learned UTSA police are handling the investigation. Happening today, it is World Blood Donor Day in the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Low on supplies now, so down 25% for the year. Your donation can put a dent in that problem. Also, if you donate today and the rest of the month, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center will give you 500 points, which is worth $50 at the center's online store. So to schedule an appointment and to donate, look for the story on our website, kset.com. Looking ahead to next week, Juneteenth is Wednesday, and there's a lot happening around town. First, a Seoul food brunch at St. Paul's Square. It's happening today from 1130 this morning until 1 o'clock this afternoon. Tomorrow will be very busy with several events. That includes the Juneteenth 5K run walk at Camargo Park, the Juneteenth Freedom Parade at Sam Houston High School, and the Juneteenth Festival at Comanche Park and the SA Juneteenth Block Party and fair at Crockett Park. So we have a full list of events and time. Just head to ksat.com. And are you the proud owner of a tiny dog? Well, you're in luck because in downtown Ice House is holding a special event for little pups tomorrow. The inaugural Tiny Dog Dash is tomorrow at Latuna Ice House and Grill on 100 Pro Rant Street. So in keeping with the name, only dogs 15 pounds and under are allowed to participate. It is $5 to enter and prizes will be awarded to dogs with the cutest fronts and behinds. <laughs> the fun all starts at seven tomorrow evening. Okay, are they gonna have a scale? Like, hey, you well, are a 20 pound dog. <laughs> you're just going by looks and hopefully maybe there's not a lot of, you know, puffiness with the hair. And no everything. body shaming for the dogs, <laughs> hopefully not. No, they'll just let them all participate. <laughs> well, if you're looking to make a splash, all of San Antonio's public outdoor pools will open tomorrow. And all 24 pools are free, open six days a week. So most pools will remain open until mid-August with a few staying open into September. The city is offering outdoor programs, including movies in the pool, group swim lessons, and aqua fitness classes, they are all for free. And get it, our own George Strait is playing his first ever concert at Kyle Field tomorrow. King George will be joined by fellow Texans Mark Parker McCollum and Katie Offerman. This will be Strait's only concert in Texas this year. You can read all about this on our website at kset.com. It is 638 and 78 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. You're just stepping out. I expect uh, it's a little humidity out there. Uh, that 78 though is not too bad compared to what we're going to see this weekend. However, we were talking earlier with Mike and he said there is a glimmer of hope for next week that it won't be so hot. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back at 642. Well, this morning we are remembering Tejano music legend Johnny Canales. He passed away yesterday at the age of 77. Now it comes just days after he announced he was dealing with health problems. Canales is a popular figure here in San Antonio and South Texas, known for the Johnny Canales Show, which launched the careers of many Tejano music artists. And you can read more about Johnny's life and legacy right now on KSET.com. Now, June is National Adopt-A-Cat Month, encouraging people to remember our feline friends when adopting a pet. So if you follow San Antonio Police Chief William McManus on Twitter, you may know that he's got a soft spot for cats. I spoke with the chief about his love for felines and how you can do your part by adopting one of the many cats and kittens at our local shelters. I'm kind of an animal guy, but cats happen to be one of my favorites. He denies being a cat whisperer, but he's probably just being modest after San Antonio Police Chief William McManus did our entire interview cool and collected with the kitten crawling on his shoulders. So cats out of the bag, Chief is a cat guy. If you follow him on Twitter, he posts about the cats he has been feeding for the past few years at downtown headquarters. Do you keep the cat food in, in your car with you at all times? Yep, you go out there right now, you'll see a big basket of cat food in the, in the rear of my car. The headquarter kitties definitely have a tail on Chief's vehicle. When they see the car pull up, they'll all come out. And I drive by there on the weekends when nobody's around and and uh, I'll have, you know, I usually go in on Saturdays and I'll feed them in the mornings and sometimes Sundays if I'm not doing anything I'll run down and feed them. He is sharing his love of cats because he wants to raise awareness for Cat Adoption Month. San Antonio Animal Care Services is at full capacity in its feline section and is encouraging cat or kitten adoptions, fosters, and its community cat program. We have a lot of feral cats in San Antonio, but we also have a number of organizations, animal care services included, that are proposing and supporting the only real life-saving solution, and that is trap, neuter, return. The community cat program is for when a feral cat shows up at your door, like Chief's Headquarter Kitties. The program helps you trap, spay, and neuter, vaccinate, and release them back to their community, where they live out their life outdoors, and people like Chief provide them with food, water, and outdoor shelter. There's a need. I mean, there's, there's so many stray animals on the street, and uh, if they can be taken care of, great. And as for the names of Chief's adopted cats? My kids named them Luna and Tuffy, and the outdoor one is named Outdoor Kitty. <laughs> I love it's so that. cute. Um, yeah, but what he was talking to me about was a lot of those cats, the ones at the, the call them the downtown uh, headquarter kitties that he feeds, he said anywhere from five to twelve. You know, they try to trap as many as they can, get them spayed and neutered, and then release them so they can live out their happy lives, Aww. getting fed. You know twice a day by Chief McManus. That, that's, that's cool. I never knew until, you know, until this story and in social media that he is such a, a, a cat person. It's a cat dad. Yeah, that, that's cool. I like that. And well, and then also you, uh, you can rent the traps if you don't own it right. in your and own it's neighborhood. All, and it's yeah. all free and Animal Care Services provides uh, you with that program, Community Cat Program. Well, very cool. Time now at 646 and traffic's building a little bit for a Friday morning. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, great story there, Sarah. You know what, Stephanie, you just said I didn't realize the chief was such a big cat person. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, RJ. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, hey guys, uh, this weekend uh, as you get set for uh, some Father's Day plans here, I-10 East and Westbound, that's going to be uh, closed here as the parts of the 1604 North Interchange or the expansion project that's going to be taking place here. But some good news, 1604 will be open in both directions here. These closures will be in place uh, starting tonight and going to 5 a.m. this Monday morning. You kind of know the drill if you're in this area. Basically, UTSA Boulevard up to the rim, that'll be our detours area as we try and get around the interchange here but those are basic bullet points in that, that area. All right, I want to show you real quick some uh, inbound and outbound drive times because uh, you know what? Things are actually looking pretty good across the city of San Antonio right now. So let's go ahead and switch over to some of those uh, maps right now. And again, New Braunfels, that's going to be your biggest issue when it comes to some of our inbound times right now. Everything else is looking pretty good as far as uh, the rest of the city and our outbound times, a lot of green on our screen there. So things looking good there. Let's check back in with uh, photojournalist Alex Gomez and see where he is at. He was out on the far west side of town. So Alex, uh, give us an update. You got a beautiful sunrise shot there. 
Yeah, good morning, RJ. I'm a little bit more northwest now. I'm at 410 eastbound headed towards I-10, but to get here from Highway 90, I had no issues. Everything looks to be up to speed on the west side. Happy Friday, and you know what, to Mike, happy Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Like you go. Yeah, he's not going to wear Lions gear, Mike, but he'll yeah. <laughs> Trying to make amends. I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, yeah. thank Maybe you. Maybe he'll, he'll do that during football season. <laughs> One day. One day. One day. Hopefully so. <laughs> yes, so. I'll, I'll get more than he can borrow it. So anyway, a uh, very special day today. I have to give a shout out to my beautiful wife, Aww. our 27th Aww. wedding wow. anniversary. You guys look like you haven't aged. Yeah. Well, she the hasn't. Same. I mean... The you, hair, you, you too, my. Oh, well, thank you. Very my hair handsome, color, and I've beautiful. got a little more of the Sharpay neck going on here. Oh, so. stop it. <laughs> but anyway. Look very yes, nice. Thank you very much. And we were got married up in Memphis, Aww. where we met. We'd what was the here. name of the dance, your first dance? What song? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. No, <laughs> Mike, this is something you... <laughs> Wow. You you know every Good detail, show. Mike. <laughs> Come on. They had a lot of music that day, Sarah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think do you think Bonnie remembers? Sure. Okay. <laughs> text. I'm gonna text, text her right <laughs> now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> happy yes, happy anniversary. So, no, I, I that's the one thing. I mean, I, I didn't mean to put you on I the spot because I, I you know usually date, we met the date our first date to all these dates and I, I don't remember that one. So. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> What a great sunrise. <laughs> My goodness gracious, look at this. And we. <laughs> I know, I know. That's one thing. So, anyway, uh, temperatures are going to continue to warm up. Now I'm really nervous. Uh, 90 at noon today. <laughs> and, and those two are there just laughing. So, uh, we will make it up to 98 later on this afternoon. So, it is going to be a hot one. We'll still have enough humidity left over to where it is going to feel like uh, about the low hundreds. So, yeah. Yeah, we'd like to see a little bit less in the way of humidity in the afternoon, but unfortunately that's not going to be the situation. We do still, and this has been going on for uh, about the past almost week, looking at the overall pattern changes that are going to be taking place. So here's the high. This is the thing that's kind of plunked down basically right on top of us. That is, it, it was just a little bit further off to the west and to the southwest and around that clockwise rotation. That's why we had some of the uh, light little showers around here. The, uh, the past couple of days, but now that it has moved in on top, it's like a dome sitting on there and it pressures down on the atmosphere. That's why we will continue and have been kind of heating up each and every day. Now, as we go on into the uh, first part of next week, this thing is going to be setting up shop over here to the east of us. So that then same clockwise rotation on the, uh, the back side of it, we get the flow coming in. The Gulf is going to be opened up. So bath water out here, more moisture aloft in the atmosphere and we'll get so the thicker layer of moisture and so therefore it's going to be tougher for that to heat up. Now we'll still have probably some heat index to deal with, but we are going to also then see uh, temperatures staying on the lower side as well as some rain chances. And there is a low that wants to develop down there to the south of us. But we are looking at a fairly decent shot at rain coming in here by the middle portion of next week. So kind of cut this seven day almost in half right there. Very hot through Father's Day. Then we start to see the temperatures drop down. Yeah, we're looking right now at upper 80s by the middle of the week and definitely better rain chances going into the middle portion of next week. So we're going to wrap things up after this. Stick around. All right, so one last check of traffic here before we get to our 7 o'clock hour, and we got a bit of a mess here. 281 southbound here at Nakoma. This is basically a crash being reported. 281 south at uh, Bitters Road. So we do have some emergency vehicles on the scene right here. One uh, off to the left-handed lane if you're coming off on 281 south right now. So we are seeing some activity there in that area, something that we will continue to follow. Let's check back in with uh, photojournalist Alex Gomez. He is out in the roads for us this morning. Alex, uh, give us an update on where you're at. Like it. Right now I'm on the northbound lanes of 281 near Nakoma. I was going to check out that crash, but just to let you know, just to get to 281 from the far west side using 410, you're not going to have any issues. Speeds are going to be good coming this way, RJ. Have a good weekend, and remember, UFL Championship, San Antonio Brahmas, they're bringing home the gold, RJ. All right, yes, we're definitely cheering for the Brahmas as they get set for that big championship game Sunday on Father's Day. All right, uh, we're going to send things over to Mike now. Mike. The goal, I love the way he was going around that, that yeah. bend in the road there, and as the uh, sky lined up, and look at that beautiful sunrise 
on tap right now, and we're going to have plenty of sunshine. We're uh, 80 right now, heat index. So it's going to be hot and steamy, 97 at 3 o'clock. We'll top off at 98 later on today. And uh, then, yeah, just nothing but sunshine out there. And as we go into the next seven days, it's just going to get hotter through the weekend. But we're looking at some decent rain chances as well as uh, lower temperatures going in toward the middle portion of next week. So it's been very consistent with the long-range forecast. So it's looking good for next week. So. We're excited about that. Well, yes. happy Father's Day again. Thank you and very much. And happy anniversary. I yes. And happy did anniversary. you text your wife about the first stamp? Yes. And what yep. did she say? She was, well, she's at work right now. She said, I don't remember. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. You're yeah, off it's okay. You're off the hook. You're, You're good. off the hook, Mike. You're good. It's totally understandable. Well, happy Father's Day happy to all the dads out there and with us and no longer with us, but have a good morning.